What's up, nerds? Welcome to episode nine of the Bandwagon Fan. This is the show where we talk about all things pop culture and what we're into. I'm Alex. I'm AJ. I'm Josh. And uh, I have bad news today, guys. We had to we had to let someone oh, go. Uh, Jamie, uh, Jamie, uh, if you're listening to this, I, I, we're not sorry. Uh, we had to, we, we had to replace you with someone more effective. Come uh, on, more Jamie. Efficient. I know. Um, so I just want to introduce uh, Kate. Kate hi, is going to be joining us. Oh, yeah. Say, say hello, Kate. I'm just going to say hi. Hi, hi. Hi, 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 hi. Uh, hi, hi, hey. She's taking over as producer. Um, she's riding our ship. So uh, let's start nerding out and checking out what's going on. Guys, have you uh, have you seen the Cuphead trailer? I don't even know what Cuphead is. Uh, isn't that a video game? My heart! I know, but I'm, I'm just gonna go My... in like it's a Nintendo serious? Switch game, isn't it? No, it's it's a it's all it's on all platforms. It's a, it's an incredible game. It's a really really funny game. So Cuphead, I've never played it. Cuphead is a side scroller. Um, it basically is about two cups, if I remember correctly, who make a deal with the devil. And ha 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 ha! When you make a deal with the devil, Monkey Paw, uh, the devil has you like running on all these like crazy errands. And so it's about these two cups trying to get their soul back. But it's like, it's really like, it's so funny because of how cute, like cutesy it's drawn. It's drawn in like that Mickey Mouse, um, almost like a, what was oh, the it's OG? Like the, Mickey- like the 20, like the Steamboat yeah. Willie. Yeah. yeah. I've, yeah, I've yeah, seen, thank you. Thank you. I Steam- saw Steam- someone Willie. play a clip of it before. Yeah. So it, it's drawn in like the Steamboat Willie style, like, like, you know, Disney uh, 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 animation, but it, it's really colorful and it's hilarious because it's like really dark. Like it's, <laughs> it's like, they're, like, for example, all the bosses, they're like these like really like demonic looking things, but they always have this creepy smile on their face. If you haven't played it, if you haven't played it, it's really, really fun. Um, game so, uh, yeah, uh, that I don't know. Um, it's on game pass, game pass. I'll play it. Otherwise I probably won't. I, I have to imagine it is, um, I don't know. It probably will be once the show, once the show comes out. But um, essentially, Cuphead, uh, they got picked up by Netflix to do a TV show, and I'm really excited. I think the the show really fits the theme of having I, – I think it really works as a TV show because uh, Wayne Brady plays a devil, which I think is hilarious what? because, uh, you know, Wayne Brady also plays – like if anyone's ever watched the Dave Chappelle show, there's that skit yes. of Wayne Brady. Like Wayne, Wayne Brady's real life, like he's a pimp. You know, he's out there collecting his money. So I find that really funny that he's playing the devil in the show. Um, but I am excited. I love Cuphead. I love the art style a lot. I think it's just hilarious. How I'm it- interested because, uh, yeah. yeah, I do remember watching a friend play the game like when it came out. Because I mm-hmm. believe it came out like a few years ago, right? It came out a while ago. I, I want to yeah. say maybe five years ago now. Yeah. So I, I think I, if you ha- if you play the game, play the game. Or if you haven't played the game, play the game. If you are interested... I have a feeling that this show is going to be pretty funny because the the, the premise of it is, is pretty good. Come on, Netflix. Right, don't cancel it after uh, three Jeez, minutes. Right? Yeah. D- d- wasn't there another trailer for another show that came out this week? There wasn't a tr- uh, trailer per se. There was a an announcement. Rings of Power is the title for the Lord of the Rings show that's going to be on Amazon. On I've only seen the image, like the graphic art. It looks very yeah. Lord of the Rings. It very much. They've only released, I think, like one still image of. I'm not. I don't know if it was Numenor or what. Um, so we don't know a whole lot about the show. There's been, you know, different announcements about casting and whatnot. So, so I did see that they the 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 expected budget because I think they already know it's going to be five seasons. Right. So the expected budget is going to be a billion dollars, which a billion is. Me. What'd you say? That does not surprise me. Yeah, well, I, I, I thought that was insane. I'm think, like, of it, <laughs> think of it from Amazon's perspective. They have so much money they don't know what to do with. And like they have they don't have to rely on this taking off to keep their company afloat. So I think in their opinion, they're just like, we don't have time to build a popular show. We need to just jump forward and make the biggest thing possible, which does make me a little nervous because I feel like the show yeah. has a. Uh, It has the flaw that it could look almost too perfect, which I think Wheel of Time has some issues with. Mm -hmm. But I think Wheel of Time was like their test run to see like how Lord of the Rings could look. I agree. Yeah, I agree with that. Yeah, that's how good we are. Yeah, I mean, we predicted that. Yeah. Well, that's true. I think wasn't that our first episode? Yeah, I think it was. Oh boy. Um, 
But I, I'm uh, I'm still looking forward to this. Um, at the very least, I do know that the Tolkien estate, like his, his descendants, are very nitpicky about who they give rights to. They mm-hmm. sell them with okay projects. There's so many projects that have been rejected by them. So I have a feeling the show will be at least decent because of that. What's his son, Christopher? Does that ring a bell? He, yeah, he died last year, I believe. Oh, I was say he he wrote a lot into um, Lord of the Rings lore. So I like it would have been yeah. cool to have someone like him giving his opinion this, on it. He was is like this the family? Editor. Is it is that the family lineage? Like every child's like, all right, well, um, you know, you're five years old, Tommy. You got to start writing your your first uh, Lord of the Rings fanfic. So get to it, buddy. You got three books to write. Well, what's, what's wild is I like he it. didn't really write a whole lot. It was more of taking his dad's unfinished works or okay. there's a lot of retconning and so he would take care of doing that stuff which wow. isn't like to diminish what christopher tolkien did it just goes to show like how uh, how expansive like, massive, it is yeah and yeah. expansive yeah. his father's work was it's people don't understand like how big that whole middle earth thing is. that's cool that's like young uh young dirty bastard uh taking on old dirty bastard <laughs> and uh rapping with wu-tang for a few years <laughs> uh that's yeah. a thing and he yeah, looks the thing. exact same like same hair he sounds the same it's awesome that's, that's the comparison right of that's a, i don't know why i remember that part. that's <laughs> yeah. funny that's funny young young db for uh for anyone <laughs> listening but yeah the, the only thing about the lord of the Rings show is there was a controversy about in the casting like they were calling for people to do like nude scenes which, yeah which is i, not I would do a nude scene for lord of the rings for I free would. Amazon, i'd yeah. volunteer i, I, I just, like, my I just want to throw that at, out there it might be for like the creation story of like when elves and humans were created or dwarves or whatever that, i was under the opinion. i was under the impression that they that it was rumored that there are sex scenes because again hbo wants to make this their game of thrones um Wait, amazon you mean done. right yeah uh, sorry. Thank you. Same, Amazon same wants to make this their Game of Thrones. Yeah, I know. What am I? Uh, they want to make this their Game of Thrones. I, I, personally, I don't have a problem with it, but I feel like the the Tolkien estate probably wouldn't have okayed on the project if they were going to try to turn this into Game of Thrones. It doesn't you know feel I mean? like Lord of the it, Rings to me. It won't either. work if they do it. And like yeah. case in point, The Witcher season one, whole lot of nudity. Season two, yeah, not no nudity, not, not nudity. Yeah. yeah. And I think yeah. they were just like, this isn't what people want. It's like, yeah, we could have told you that. I just don't think nudity fits with Lord of the Rings because it's never really, to my knowledge, been there. It's never been a focus. It's, it's never been right. a, yeah, yeah. It's, it's, it's HBO's tactic. HBO has this thing where they um, they figured out long ago this this ancient secret that sex sells. And so, like, a lot of their shows just throw, like, titty and penis, like, in your face just for, like, either the shock value or just for, like, the, I, I guess to try to draw you in, right? Or to distract you from really, really boring monologues. Well, well, the joke, I think the joke for Game of Thrones was always like, a lot of people didn't realize the show was about dragons until like, you know, the second season, you know, because they're just like, hey, it's a show, old timey people get naked. So I don't know. I mean, it's, uh, we'll see. I, I yeah, have low I expectations. See, yeah. yeah. I, I I want to have high expectations, but I, I should have them below just so I can actually be excited when I watch it. You guys expect nothing. You can never be disappointed. That, 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 that's MJ. That, that, that's MJ's quote. Yeah. Love it. <laughs> My only question is, um, who is Joss Whedon? That's the oh, you say Joss it. Whedon? Joss oh. Whedon? I have Joss no Whedon. idea who that Man. is. Joss Whedon directed it's Buffy. Uh, jo- Joss Whedon directed the OG Marvel movies. He I think did the, the first, first two. The first two. Okay. Yeah, yeah. He did, I, I he did, he did the first one. He did the he first also, one, okay. and then and he did Age of Ultron. He also did the My least favorite reshoots one. for the Justice League. Justice League reshoots. Which is why I kept saying Justice League in that episode. He justice. Uh, that went yeah. well over my head. It's a good pun. Butchered that he, dude, he is in so much hot water, and yes, he is. He recently stuck his head out to speak up about it. Definitely made it worse. So, um, so is, is it? Does this have to do with the actor who plays um, Cyborg? Th- there is part of it. Okay, this all stems from he did a uh, an interview, and in this interview, he you know just went into all this, all the allegations and like controversy that's behind him. And his, his big excuse was like he was young. He used to get excited a lot. So he'd get like, you know, be passionate and yell and whatnot. Apparently, he's also like a love and uh, sex addict. So he's like gotten treatment for that. 
What's really weird, though, is he was not allowed to be alone with Michelle Trachtenberg, who was from Buffy series. Yeah. 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 Which she was 15 at the time. Um, uh, I don't know how old he was probably like in his 20s or 30s. He's probably in his 20s. Probably yeah. Probably like still, in his 20s. Yeah. Still old. Right. Yeah. In comparison. Still not OK. Not OK at all. Um, stuff like that. And then what really got to me, because I'm more familiar with this part, was he famously has been accused of telling Gal Gadot that he was going to ruin her career. Yes. Yes. And I remember that. his excuse from this interview was she doesn't f- speak English fluently. So she didn't understand what he was trying to like. He was like messing with her. And she ah, yes. Uh, yes. yes. Which, okay. was, Good old... I understood perfectly. The 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 good old she doesn't speak English, so it's just a misunderstanding. Right. I see. And yeah. then the last thing is uh Ray Fisher famously was the heart of the Snyder cut. Was hardly in the Justice League cut. Hardly. I forgot he was in the movie. Right. Yeah. And Joss Whedon's response to everything Ray Fisher has been saying is He's a bad actor. He's a bad actor in both, yes. in both senses of the word. Which, which, which is really bold to say after the Snyder cut. Right. That, that is a. If, the, if we never got the Snyder cut, I would have been like, oh, maybe he is a bad actor. Right. Super bold when Zack Snyder is like, I don't know, I, I don't know what you were watching, but this is the actor that we got to do this part. So yeah, it's 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 a little messy. It's a little it, messy. It, it is, and he he stuck his foot in his mouth big time, man. Yeah, I'm yeah. That sounds uh, sounds like he just dug his hole even deeper, and uh, yeah, I, I'm sure I, in uh, in a week we'll hear more things <laughs> that'll be worse. I, I'm sure, but you know, I, I, the thing I'm glad about is there is some accountability to the situation at least that things are getting out there. Yeah, I, I know a lot of people will get upset about the idea of cancel culture. I've heard, I think it was Force Adversity. It's a YouTube channel. They've coined the term, according to my knowledge, consequence culture. Mm. You do, you know. That's from a, me, yeah. you know, shady Bad things. Bad things, like, yeah. Going to come yeah. back to you one day. Yeah, yeah. I mean, and 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 I and I think in his case, he's had. I, I know it, the the interview is probably the, what's on our minds, but I mean, he has been accused of like just being misogynistic. Um, right. I mean, even I remember there was this whole thing about the way he films women is a little weird. Uh, he's, he he yeah. he always and it, which yeah, I think is. Uh, so we'll use Gal Gadot as an example. Just like having these shots, like, from, changes from the Snyder cut. Uh, I don't have like the 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 the, the video now, but there are scenes that are shot in Joss Whedon's uh, version that are just a little bit uh, a little bit you know a little bit sexualized, where there really isn't a need to be. Uh, so that's like an example. Like when you watch you know Zack Snyder's version, it's just Gal Gadot doing her thing as Wonder Woman. You know yeah. what I mean? Yeah. Josh, did you have something to throw on that? I accidentally hit the button. But what I was going to oh. say is I agree with AJ. Um, it's just like the way and there's a lot of people who do this, the way they frame shots when they're filming women. Mm-hmm. You're very clearly My, trying to Michael like, Bay. yes, Michael yeah. Bay is another person who does this. It's like very apparent. You're like trying to sexualize them. Yeah, which I'm not. There's no, I'm not trying to say like there's never a place for that. Right. But that shouldn't be the sole focus of when you have a woman in the scene. Yeah. Especially, especially when you have like a character and in, in Josh Wheaton's case, like, like wonder woman, right? Like her character is not based on her sexuality. It's, it's based on her power, her strength. You know what I mean? She's a strong woman and she is, she's strong, not because she has physical strength, but because she has to carry literally sometimes the weight of the world. Right. Although That's there are some day. ties to like uh, bondage with wonder woman. Going yeah, back to, uh, yeah, I know. With, with the rope thing, I know. It, I and watched that's always the weird. documentary on uh, on her being created. Yeah, yeah pretty interesting. Created were, uh, interesting to say the least. Yeah, and I forgot the name of the documentary. And that's, and that's why men shouldn't write women. Just saying, it's always weird. And it's like you're not a woman, so why are you doing this in the first place? It's just so it's just always a little weird. Always yeah, a little there, weird. There, there, I think there's few men who can do that, or same right. with like straight white men writing LGBTQ characters right. or like people right. of color. Right. I was watching a channel today. Uh, comics will break your heart, 
and they were saying how Tom Taylor is like the only white man they want to be writing a LGBTQ story. I was about he, to yeah, bring him up. He's it. killing it yeah. right now. Yeah, like he, he As, does know how to handle that. I'll give him credit. For people that know, don't know, Tom Taylor is writing uh, Superman, Son of Kal-El. Oh, currently. Son of Kal-El, yeah. He's yeah. doing that, Nightwing, and he's also pretty famous for having done Injustice and Deceased. Yes. Amongst many, many other writings. Yeah. So what else we got, guys? Well, more nerdage. We have oh, perfect. We have D and D is turning oh. fifty in twenty twenty four. Really? And, right. Which you know that's a ways off. But what's interesting is they announced that they'll be making a new addition to the game. Oh, when that happens. That's so, cool. I should probably play the first edition of the game before I jump in. No, actually, don't play the first edition. Don't. Yeah. D and D has. So if you're an OG player, you will have very different opinions on this uh fifth edition which is the current one i believe is very it's a lot more simplistic and that's the edition i have been able to play like all of two times because it's hard to find a consistent party yeah but we had fun when we did we did we did yeah (laughs) but yeah they're they're gonna make a sixth edition which it'll be very interesting to see what they're going to do with this. what changes yeah yeah cool i'm all i'm all for some change in my personal opinion they should just make a game but that's that's neither here nor there like a video game yeah they made one. It's not very good. Oh, I know. They made, it's they made like Neverwinter yeah. Nights, which is I think it's two pack. It's a it. two pack of cheeks. Yeah, it's really bad. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Let me rephrase too. I'm usually okay with change, but not always <laughs> in the sense of uh, you know like a big merger happening recently. You mean, you mean a monopoly? Allegedly. Yeah. There's a Allegedly. little company called Microsoft. I heard those guys. Uh, yeah, they're not that big, but you know, a couple people know them, and they yeah, decided you know. to buy a medium-sized slash small video game company called Activision and Blizzard, which maybe you've heard of. You know, Nuts. World of Warcraft, Tony Hawk, Call of Duty, Candy uh, Crush. I'm pretty sure, like yeah, Candy Crush. Right? Yes, yeah. They've they've got like every form of it. I don't know how this was a monopoly. Allegedly. So Allegedly. It, I don't just to put it out, just to put it out there. Yeah, I mean, just to put it out there. Or so I've heard. It, it, it won't be considered a monopoly only because there aren't laws. Josh and I talk about this all the time that, like, you know, old people who run our country have no idea what is happening on the Internet. There Zero. aren't laws that protect digital services the same way, you know, you can say, oh, there's a monopoly on electric companies. You can't have all these electric companies. You know what I mean? These old people have no idea what's happening. They don't, they don't care. They don't know. They don't care. So everyone who says that it's a monopoly, maybe, but who's going to stop them? You, you, it, it's the FTC. I'm pretty sure has never tried to touch their feet in matters of video games. Otherwise, the ESRB wouldn't exist. So I think It'll legally it's a monopoly. Change. Allegedly, yeah, but yeah, because like AJ said, there's no laws on the books for this. There's no laws. Yeah, they there's no precedent. There's no precedent. They could do whatever they could buy every other gaming company. No one would be like. I don't understand. I could play. I could still play Candy Crush. Right. You know? Quick, quick <laughs> tangent. Like, if you're a millennial, please get into politics because the older generations don't know how to handle this stuff. Old or people have no idea. Here, like, no yeah. disrespect. If you're older, like, you know, you have your thing. But we need people who know what they're talking about. I mean, no, I, old people, old people, open yeah. warfare from like Facebook I, and all that. I, I am not yeah, saying that ridiculous. we don't need old people in power. I'm just saying that. Yeah. I'm just saying that like there, there's, there's too many of them, and so they have no idea. Like, maybe it's we'll do an all, episode about it. Yeah, yeah, maybe we'll do an episode about it. But there are so many things. Like, we'll give a, we'll give a quick example, right? Like Google owes every person who's ever typed in Google.com and used their search engine, they owe everyone a check. They they are able to monetize your literal personal information, and they that's how they've made their billions. And we don't get any royalties. You, yeah, you don't get like fundamentally that would make no sense, right? If like your electric company is like, hey man, I see you bought a new toaster, you didn't plug it in, but we're gonna charge you a little bit more just because we know that when you plug it in, you know it's gonna be you know we're, we're gonna have that power there ready for you. Like that wouldn't make sense for your electric company to do that. You know it's. It's crazy. Microsoft, yeah, they they have because of this, they will have a total of thirty internal studios. You mm-hmm. can't tell me that's not a monopoly. And they're going to have monopoly. more. Like and there's, and they're, gonna they're going more. to buy more companies. Yeah, they're, they're definitely going to buy more. They, they, someone did simple math, and they're like, if we just buy them all, no one else can play. No one else can play any other games. Right. So, and like, what yeah. else is messy about this is Activision Blizzard is already having its own issues 
with mm-hmm. a bunch of different tons samples. of like sexual, sexual assault, harassment, so many uh, problems, and n- none of it's been solved yet. And that's the insane no, thing. No, that's the, the that's actually the basis that Microsoft yeah. approached uh, Activision. They're like, "Hey guys, look, you got a lot of sexual assault charges. We could take care of that if you just buy our company." And they're like, "Oh, perfect. This is great." So that's one of the reasons why they sold, which is like, scummy. If, if, if you're unaware and you're a gamer. Activision Blizzard, their CEO was asked to step down by a thousand employees. Yes, Th- that says a lot. That's got to be like the majority so, of their staff. If you, like, if you are a gamer, look into the studio. Bobby Kotick is an evil, evil dude. He's yeah, an evil guy, guy. Sucks. Yeah, I'm gonna call it out. He can fight us on the podcast. Let's go. <laughs> I'll fight him in real life. Let's get Jake Paul. You know what? I will. I will fight him on the phone, dude. I will fight him, King of the Hill style. Oh yeah! Oh, let's yes. <laughs> Speaking of which, <laughs> Speaking of which, King of the Hill. Ever heard of it? Is um, that a, is that coming it, back or something? Little, oh, I, I heard it's kind of funny. I love that show so much. I literally watch it at least once a month. It's yeah, just yeah, like yeah, it's yeah, the perfect yeah. like feel good show. Like not that everything is written perfectly in it, but for especially coming out in the nineties, like I feel like it's ahead of its time with like so much subject matter. Oh, yeah. Funny. Yeah. And and I, I I remember reading that Mike Judge, the, the showrunner, when he moved to Texas, I, I guess the basis of the show was that he had this incident one time where his fence collapsed from like high high winds or something like that. Mm-hmm. And the next day, his neighbors, he didn't ask them. He didn't say a word. They came. They fixed his fence. They, they, they all went back to their houses. They didn't say anything to him. What? And, he, and he just thought how crazy that was that like he loved like that town that he lived in. Uh, when when whenever he lived in Texas, Mike Mike Judge is from. He's not. I want to say he was born in like Brazil, um, or something like that. He was he wasn't born in America, which oh, is interesting. Really? Yeah, it's Mike mean, Judge and Craig Daniels, right? Uh, Craig the, Daniels. The, the, the showrunners, yeah, the Craig yeah. Daniels. Sorry, yeah, yeah. Craig. Um, but yeah, he was born in another country, so uh, See, I don't know. I don't. What's up? Ecuador. Uh, Ecuador. 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 Cool. Thank you. Thank you, Gata. Yes, Ecuador. He was born in Ecuador. So I, I always find that so funny that, you know, he was born there, came here. Um, but yeah, I mean, he, that's what the basis of King of the Hill is on. It's just that, like, that camaraderie and that, like, Texas, you know, and living in Texas, I can tell you, that's how Texas people are, man. Like, you live here, you're one of their own, whether they like you or not. Like, you're it's one nice. of their own. It's, it's, yeah. That's nice. It's authentic. Yeah. Um, and for anyone who hasn't really watched King of the Hill, um, one huge issue I've always had is the animation is awful. I think it's one of the most <laughs> uncomfortable animated shows. Like to this day, as much as I love it, everything <sighs> animated in that makes me cringe. I don't like their faces. I don't like the environments. It's an ugly show, but the writing is phenomenal. And it is like, you'll get used to it. Like just give it like five episodes. You stop thinking about it as much, and like the, yeah, the script yeah. carries the show. Oh, yeah, sure. I mean, and and and, it, and I'll give them credit. It definitely. So I remember either reading or watching a video about this that Mike Judge actually drew those characters, like really like around the time he had to do his pitch meeting. So like that's you one of the tell. reasons. Yeah, that's one of the reasons why it's so like rough. Like, so but bad. also, but also that that's the artist's it's eye, right? The, that's, it's that's part of the show. That's, that's part of its yeah. show. It's, yeah. it's just the way the characters are are all drawn. It's 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 unique. It's a distinct and unique. You got to give it credit for that. Yeah, it, it's definitely it's like a very classic show that I think a lot of people have a fondness for. Yeah, yeah, and still holds up. Still holds up. Definitely does. Uh, did you guys want to say anything else before we move on? Yeah, one last thing is going into next week, we will be doing a saga spotlight. Nice. So we just yes. uh, let our listeners know about that. Is it real? Sagas. Like is is it actually coming out? Because like I can't be messed with again. I can't wait three more it, years. It is. Saga is coming back. Saga is a it's a mix of like sci-fi and fantasy, but very much centered and anchored by a, a Family story. It's about yeah. a, it's like a space opera, really. Yeah, it it's, is, it's yeah. beautiful, but it's also very, it's very true to life. It holds no punches. It's very graphic. So that episode is not going to be for children. Just FYI. Yeah, seriously. Don't let your kids watch. Even though I'm pretty sure we don't have any. Yeah, and uh, no if love. you want, if you want to read it, check it out. But yeah, don't uh, don't bring it to work. You will get some weird stares. <laughs> yeah, it's a, uh, it's a don't. Kate, don't read it on the on the train. <laughs> hide your kids. Hide your kids. Hide your wife. 
it's coming for everybody. Yeah, that's, that's though, it, it is phenomenal. So it's we will, great we will, though. I'm excited to talk about it. I'm so excited. Like on top of that, like honestly, like I feel like this is just a good week for content coming out. Why? What's up, Alex? What you got for us? Yeah. So I know like a lot of the comics I've talked about. I mean, I I did just discuss Batman one um, one weekend, but I've been trying to cover more indie stuff just because like that's usually mm-hmm. what I love, but. I feel like the past month Marvel has just been killing it with uh, their comics um, specifically with Spider-Man. Uh, I think everyone's kind of been on the Spider-Man train with like the, you know, the movie coming out the movie. Are yeah. either of you up to date on Spider-Man issues right now? Like if you read anything, no, I have not been reading, but because of people like Robbie from the pop culture philosophers or Verno for the Missouri mm-hmm. bros, I loosely know what's been going on, but I I haven't actually picked up any Spider-Man forever. Yeah. So honestly, like I, I think amazing Spider-Man, I think they're on like, they're like issue 80 something right now. And that's too much for me. Like I, (laughs) I I just, yeah, I don't, I, even if it's good, I've heard it's been okay, which isn't like giving me much motivation to jump in 86 issues is just too much to jump forward right now. Um, Something that's okay. That's why I've been excited with like this new issue right now. It's a new run, like kind of continuing from a previous era, but it's technically a new story. You can jump in like me. Um, I don't remember how many issues that are coming out, but I think it's only like five. So it's just like, Mm. it's going to end quick. I love those just because like, I don't have a lot of time in my day and I'm still like reading and watching movies and skateboarding and whatever. So I'm not always thinking about comics. Uh, Josh, how do you say his name before him butcher it? Ben, how ben do you say Riley. his last name? Ben Riley. Riley? Right. Okay. So just a little backstory. I had never heard of Ben Riley. Um, like I've read Spider-Man on and off for probably my whole life. Um, like since the nineties, but I'm not, I've never been that invested in comics where it's like, I feel like I binge read for like two months and then I just don't read them for like, for a while six months or sometimes longer so this was cool like it's written by um i don't know how to say his last name it's jm demetis i think he is like an iconic dc writer from the 80s and it's it's just fun like seeing some of these like og comic guys like still writing to this day and taking on like new characters so that alone got me a little excited um i think ben riley is a little controversial because he comes from the uh, Clone Saga, which I think is out of the 90s. And the what? The, it's the Clone Saga. What is that? It's a, That's a, a hot topic for debate. So, yeah, I've never read it, but it's coined uh, the most controversial Spider-Man run to ever come out. Whoa, why? Yeah. Uh, I think I think there's just a, there's like a lot of uh, things that happened with like Peter Parker getting cloned and them not being sure like um it's, if he's like the real spider-man if i'm correct josh have you read it i haven't read i i've read like bits and pieces of it not the full run but yeah basically yeah. the idea was that peter parker wasn't actually peter parker like he was a clone the whole time what the and vice versa like ben riley is a clone or like yeah, yeah it was like who, who's the was clone? this we don't know. was this in lieu of like a multiverse maybe type of thing like before that was probably a bigger no, concept no, no man they just straight oh, wow. up they make clones yeah i think they just I think this was like, this was main run at the time. Um, that's why I think it's cool with this. Like if you're some hardcore Peter Parker nerd, like this is its own thing. Like whatever, <laughs> like go read Peter Parker. This is Ben <laughs> Riley. We're not here to, we're not here to talk about Peter today outside of uh, some of the things I'll bring up. But what I thought was cool with this story, again, it's separate from the main run. So you can like jump in pretty much right away. But like Ben Ben Riley is trying to make a life for himself with um, like he has lived outside of New York for, I believe, years. He's coming back to New York City for the first time. And like Peter and MJ are basically just like on their own, doing their own thing. Uh, so he knows Peter Parker in this in this timeline. Yeah. Oh. Or or at least I've, I've okay. never run. I've never okay. read. Okay. They're very much aware of each other. Yeah. Okay. But they, they're okay. aware of each other. That's interesting. <laughs> yeah. So it's it's 
that's part yeah. of their, their clone thing? I mean, is the clone thing, is that carrying on? Well, from that's, the other, yeah, so that's the crazy the thing. Um, it's, it takes place um, about five years after that series. Uh, so oh. essentially Peter was cloned after um, an altercation with the Jackal, which I personally don't know who that villain is. I f- do either of he's, you he's know? He's a lower that? tier Spider-Man. Yeah, I... Yeah. He no, sounds, he, I've never heard of he's him. A he's a Z-list celebrity. Yeah, sorry, the jackal. I didn't bother to research anything about you. But like, if someone, if some hardcore fan of the jackal, uh, like, if you're passionate about him, let us know. There's always one. There's always yeah. one. Uh, I think Kate's a fan. Up. Yeah, I was going to say, I just looked him up. I Googled a picture of him, and he is quite the creepy looking fellow. He, what does oh, he look no. like? Just, Looks like a um, imagine Dobby from Harry Potter, but <laughs> on steroids and green. So like, mm. if Dobby and the Grinch had a baby that got jacked, so yeah, yeah. Oh that's, my god. Okay, that's that's why he's a zealous villain. That that well, right there. Sorry, the jackal. I hope someone proves that he is the best, the best villain. Like, let's let's prove us wrong. Uh, but nah. the way Kate, the way you described him. He sounds horrible, <laughs> and I just feel like he should be forgotten. <laughs> um, but yeah, so that's crazy. So like the jackal is probably angry with his life because he wasn't featured in Harry Potter, so now he has to unleash it on Peter Parker. <laughs> he him. He's like, I'm um, switching series. That's the multiverse. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. But this is five years later, and Ben Riley has now learned that he is actually the real original Peter Parker, and Peter Parker is not Peter Parker, or I don't know. We don't know yet. This is the, I, I think okay. it's jumping into another uh, hot take here. Wait, um, so they're not sure who's real again? No, oh, Ben. No. Yeah, but Ben is claiming that he knows that he's the real one. This is why people, this is part of why people hated that first clone song. <laughs> it was probably yeah. too confusing. So I feel yeah, like it it's bringing it in. It is confusing, but I feel like because this is a five issue run, like whatever whatever main event they're going to discuss has to come in and close fairly quickly. You know, that, that, that reminds me of uh, invincible, how the twins are technically clones of each other. Yeah. You know, they, they program, they program, <laughs> they program each other so that the other one doesn't know it's the clone because when they do, they oh, start trying to yeah. kill each other. Yeah. I forgot about <laughs> that. That's hilarious. That's invincible is that, such a great show for you. I, I find that, I find that just such a funny thing that they throw in there. That's like, if they know the other one's the clone, then they start trying to kill each other, which is yeah, just, just funny to me. Yeah. I think it's great. Um, but like, the reason I think this run seems really cool so far is like Ben Ben Riley is very very like lighthearted, but I feel like the way he carries himself is different than Peter. Um, but similarities I saw is like there's a villain in the beginning named um, Carrion, and he like is basically going on this tangent, and he's in like a graveyard, and he's just like murdering people like left and right, but like all these people like you know the cops are coming and they think like oh we needed to start shooting him. And Ben's like, this looks like he is being controlled or like going through something. And he like learns that uh, Carrion's mother is like dying from a stroke. So like uh-huh. he kind of like jumps in and like uh, learns all this information, figures out a way to stop him, which I thought was really cool. Um, it closes that like almost right away. And then it jumps into the main plot, which is there's a murderer on the loose killing women in new york on first dates oh t- tinder killer yeah a tinder killer yeah. <laughs> i guess this could be his name but i thought i thought it was kind of a cool twist i'm not used to like murder mysteries in the spider-man in a, in a universe. Mar- yeah in a spider-man yeah yeah and, and uh i feel like it could be a little dark they have like a tie-in with the scorpion but like we don't know why he's here yet okay. um he could be just like some useless side villain or he could be the main thing but I, I feel like somehow he's gonna like reveal some like some tie in to the murderer, or be the murderer, or be the murderer. But yeah, I don't might be the murderer. I don't twist. think it is. I mean, it could be the it could be a clone of the scorpion. I don't know. Clone, yeah, let's clone, just clone, let's just stories get, a clone. clone stories get so sloppy. So yeah, I don't know. Right. Who knows? They do. But I'm yeah. I'm gonna give this this run the benefit of the doubt, especially because it's like an OG um, writer. Yeah, I think it has a lot of potential i thought this first issue was really cool most people i've seen that have been discussing it 
have been kind of on the same page of like, this is really awesome so far, but it's about one issue from just, you know, completely destroying itself and being terrible. <laughs> so uh, <laughs> let's, okay, like, it holds up, man. Yeah, let's let's give it a shot. I, I'll keep everyone updated, even if I don't cover it in full. I'll at least give like a maybe like a quick like thirty second recap on. So Ben, Ben's garbage right now. I'm sorry. I was like, uh, 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 issue four. It, he died. It, there's nothing left to. There's nothing left to cover from this issue five. I'm like, turns out Scorpion was actually Scorpion the real Spider-Man. Peter Parker. Yeah, he's the Peter. <laughs> and he combined himself with the Jackal. Stupid. So stupid. Yeah, it 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 has potential to be dumb, but we'll, we'll see. see how it goes. All right. Yeah. Yeah. Well, keep us posted. We'll uh, guys, uh, what's your rating for it, though? Uh, for this first issue? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, I'm giving it, honestly, a five out of five. Wow. Yeah, that's why I'm like, I'm going hey. The writing, the writing was give, really... Never give perfect scores. Never give a perfect... That's a well, rookie that's, score, bro. That's... No, I... Again, though, because it's the first issue, it could change. But yeah. this this first issue, I wouldn't have changed how they wrote it. Nice. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Yeah. And I like Thank that they're bringing in villains that I that I've never heard of. Like I, I like all the A listers, but it's cool to like read up on somebody who's like yeah. a little unheard Z, of. A Z lister, yeah. A whole new world, yeah. revisiting some old stuff. Bring uh, it on. What do you got, AJ? Yeah, uh, guys, uh, have you guys ever heard of this game called Final Fantasy? Uh, What's yes. this? No, okay, so uh, you know the. Uh, Square Enix released Final Fantasy VII, I think, back in 1997. Uh, I back when, when it was, was SquareSoft. Like, yeah, SquareSoft. Yeah, that's a deep cut. Um, I remember as a kid, I was heartbroken because my cousin lent me the. Back then, by the way, for our younger viewers, um, games used to come in discs, and when the game was too big, it came in multiple discs. So, like a oh, they don't know what a they don't know what a cassette player is, but like. When you finish, when you got to a certain point in the game, you had to take out the disc and put in the nest disc. It was pretty wild. But um, my cousin had given me the the Final Fantasy VII disc, disc set, and I was really, really gassed to play it. I put it in. First disc didn't work, so I couldn't play the game. So uh, I played many other Final Fantasy games, uh, most recently Final Fantasy XV. Loved it. I thought it was great up until the third act, which is total cheeks. It is horrible. And it almost made me not want to beat the game. I hated it Whoa. so much. It was it was like you playing this like really fun game, and then like three quarters, like 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 uh, uh, the, the last third of the game just turns into this like literal literal dungeon crawler. <sighs> Besides the point, um, yeah, I, I totally agree. I loved that game until that. Like it was yes, it was okay, like you know a separate. About. Yeah, I, I had to think about it for a second. My mind, I almost threw my controller because I, I'll never forget this for the rest it's of not my life. Fun at that point either. It's, well, if you remember, it's about a, the the first part of that dungeon crawling segment. It's about four hours, and so I remember being like, "Okay, I'm just gonna finish this mission and go to bed." And it's like two in the morning. I'm like, "This was the worst thing I ever experienced in my life," and I never wanted. I I almost just stopped playing the game. Honestly, thanks for bringing um, back terrible video game terrible memories. memories. Yeah. So uh, with Final Fantasy VII, uh, you know, I'm not gonna go into the history of it. It's a long history, but. To, uh, to to make an abridged version of it, they made this game, this, this this video game. A lot of people consider it to be like one of the greatest video games ever. It has an incredible story, and when you think about how they made that game back in 1997, it's pretty wild how they made such a you know uh, impactful story with like you know basically using a calculator to code the game. The story is um, still relevant to this day too. Story is so many relevant. it that's, tackles that's so many funniest, issues about the environment. Yeah, that's the funniest part it. about it. It's 100% still relevant. So like you, the themes make even more sense today than it did back in 1997. Um but uh, uh, essentially uh when the PlayStation 3 came out uh, Sony made a uh, like a tech demo to demo like the graphical uh, power of the PlayStation 3, and they used Final Fantasy as like that tech demo. People lost their mind. They're like, "Oh my god, they're making a, a remaster of, of Final Fantasy." And Sony's like, "Yeah," or, or Square Enix is like, "No, we're not doing that. That's going to cost oh, too much money." Really? Fast forward to many years later, they 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 approach one of the original show uh, the, the designers and writers for the game, and they. They're having him make a multi-game remake of Final Fantasy VII. So that's how we got here. It finally came out for PC. 
I don't have a PlayStation. I play PC and Xbox. So that's what I decided to play it on. Uh, to give like a really like, you know, this game is only six hours of the story of the original game. So the original game is 36 hours. This Whoa. game takes place within the frame of yeah, the first six game. hours. I mean, the but they, yes, but they milked it out to 40 hours and they added like, like every character gets a backstory and they added much more context to like the first six hours of the game, which I was pretty like weary of before I started. Um, so I'll just be like summarizing and recapping like just this game. I'm not going to go into the whole story. That that would probably have to be like a spotlight episode type of thing. But um, essentially, the game is about uh, you play as the as a, as as Cloud. He is a mercenary for hire. Um, he's he is part. Of, he's like a super soldier. He's basically Captain America with a sword instead of a shield. A big old um, Buster sword. Big old sword. Okay, big old anime sword. And uh, you are hired by e- by what uh, by a, an eco defending group. They're labeled as terrorists, but from their perspective, they're defending the Earth from the big bad company. And so the game is about y- you know your missions as you're trying to uh, incapacitate the operations of this big electric company. But lo and behold, there's like a lot of like backstory. Right, Cloud has like a really mysterious past. Um, he is constantly being visited with visions of a former, like uh, a former soldier. Soldier is the name of the program he was in. So he's constantly vi- visited by a former soldier who he assumed was dead through visions, and he doesn't understand why. Um, throughout their operations, they make the big bad company mad. The big bad company decides to commit mass genocide and basically frame the eco terrorist group as the ones who committed the genocide and in uh in that i guess you could say uh, atrocity they they kidnap one of the friends of the of the, the eco terrorist who turns out to be part of this like proto human race thing this like the the original humans basically um and so the the second half of the game is basically you trying to save her um from this this big bad company so from that description, you're like, okay, I mean, it sounds generic. Again, it's only six hours of a very long and complicated story. And again, I remember this plot's like the plot tw- is, almost 20 uh, years old at this point. 20 years old. And like, I was trying to explain it to my wife and she just looked at me like I was insane, but it's a really good story. Um, I got to be honest with you guys. If I, this was one of the best games I played since Red Dead Redemption 2. Wow. It was, okay. it was incredible. I felt like I was playing a movie. First of all, the the graphics in this thing are off the wall beautiful. It it is literally. I mean, they had to rebuild the game from the ground up, so it, it's cool seeing. You know, as even though I never got to play it when I was a kid, I did play Final Fantasy VII eventually, and so like it's cool to see how they took two D images and just absolutely like made it like full of life. I thought that was really cool. Yeah, this um, game used to be like just polygons, essentially. Polygons. I mean, like, I mean, like, if you if if anyone remembers, like, uh, Super Mario sixty four, that's what all the characters looked like. Like, they had no hands; they just had like diamond diamond fists. You know what I mean? Yeah, like, it, it's crazy that. what they did then and how how the game looks now. So, in terms of graphics, I think the game looks absolutely stunning. Uh, the the combat they move from turn based. So, uh, for those who don't know, turn based is like Pokemon style. Like, you click a button and then someone does something. They change from that to like where your your every button press has an ac- actual action, so you can dodge, you can use your spells. Um, I thought the the combat felt fun. It was it's a little clunky because you can uh, sift through like the characters, you can change and control any of the characters. So I felt like it was a little clunky doing that. But other than that, the combat is great. Um, if you played Final Fantasy, uh, excuse me, if you played Kingdom Hearts, it copy and pastes that combat system from Kingdom Hearts, except you can control the other characters. Um, so there's that. Uh, the music, I got to be honest with you guys, I, I usually don't care about music in a video game that much, but the music in this game is like top notch. Like there are scenes in this game where it is only made palpable because the the score, like th- it's hard to explain unless you play it or you listen to it, but it, it was... It's really cool that they went all out in, in this remake because a lot of people, <coughs> Activision, make really, really crappy remakes and they put like no effort into them. Often 
just literally copy and pasting the same game and being like, it's a remaster because it's upscaled to 4K now. Like, it's so crazy that, that they get away with that. Um, it's cool, though. I, I also just looked. It looks like the um, the um out of the composers, a lot of the original composers <laughs> yes, the original are part of it. Yes, the original composers came back like 20 years to later. do it 20 yeah, years later. Awesome. But but the difference is, like, before, it's like 8-bit sounds, you know? It's like... Doo, 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 boo, boo, boo. Right now, it's like actual orchestras doing the songs and it's like it's nuts i'm like dude this sounds amazing like again i don't really care about that kind of stuff when i'm playing a video game but the fact that i took notice of it just lets you know how how prolific it is i care yeah i mean if i'm spending were, money i want i want an experience i want that music to sound trust tight. me the oh and uh for the american version the voiceover so i i like anime and something that really will take me out of a dub version of an anime is the voiceovers because a lot of times like a, a really good example actually if if anyone watched squid games and you watched yeah, yeah. the the dubbed version of Squid Games. Let me tell you, at least I think Netflix fixed it now. But the original dubbed uh, audio for Squid Games sounds insane. It literally sounds like somebody was in their closet, and that's how they did the voiceovers. It sounds really bad. It sounds yeah. really like I never watched like, dubbed like, versions. Like, like like oh my! Yeah. But it's not even the audio quality. It's like, hey, hey, thanks for the cookie. I. I appreciate it. It's so awkward. Like the the dialogue oh, yeah. is so jilted and like awkward. They're like, what is this? So that's just to say, like, I, you know, the 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 voice actors that they got on this are I mean, you've probably seen them in like movies and stuff like that, but they did a great job. The voice actors did a tremendous job. Every character sounds like the way they should sound. So I I honestly I uh, other than like minor complaints about you know, like I said, like the combat system. I also felt like another complaint that I could probably stick in there is that like, I felt like, again, this is six hours of a 38 hour game. So they really like, I mean, there is no more milk left by the end of the game and they're milking it. Okay. They are milking this cow. And so, uh, there were times in the game I'm like, ah, man, I, I just kind of want to get to like the more story um, the story of the, the components that actually contain story because they, they do put in these, like, if you, if you watch anime, you know, you're very aware of filler culture. And so like they put these filler, they put, I would probably argue that there's probably 20 hours worth of filler in the game. And so yeah. that's the only part about it. That's like, ah, man, I mean, it's fun. It's fun playing through it, but it's like, you can remove those, those segments from the game and miss, mm-hmm. and miss nothing. Uh, so I, I would probably lobby those, my two biggest complaints. But if I had to give it a rating, and I, I guess we're doing stars this week. What's your um, rating, AJ? I'll, I'll give it. A, I'll give it a four point five. I'll give it a four oh, five. That's yeah. Good. Again, again, that's I good. I gotta reserve perfect ratings for for like for Ben X1, Riley. But th- but no, <laughs> <laughs> no, no. I mean, they don't even know their cloning situation yet. No, not you can't give a five star to that. I'm just playing. <laughs> too late. Um, too late. Th- but I, I think the the biggest reason why I, the takeaways I give it a four or five, besides what I mentioned, also is the fact that this is only part one of what six game five games. So it's kind of it it kind of sucks that you're playing a game and if you know what happens at the end of Final Fantasy VII, you're like, dang, I'm gonna have to wait like ten years, literally ten years, before I can play the end part of the story. So. That is the downside to it. But other than that, if you haven't played it, I highly, highly recommend it. It's a lot of fun. You don't need to know the Final Fantasy story because they they re envision it. So you could just jump in, start playing, have a blast. So yeah. So I'm cool. gonna interject here and say I have never played a single Final Fantasy game. Okay. And I will never play one unless one of our listeners tells me to. Oh well, if Josh, you, I'm telling you, if you yeah. ever chose to play one, Final Fantasy VII would be the one. Beyond oh, yeah. be, because the story is so, I guess, uh, for a Japanese animated uh, story, it, it is pretty grounded. I have to say, compared to some of the other crazy things that happens right. in that, the other Final Fantasy issue, games, yeah. yeah. So some of the other Final Fantasy, you're like, what is happening? Um, but this one is pretty grounded. Like I, I think that's one of the other reasons why they did the remaster because it gave the it gave them the ability to like explain things, so it doesn't seem like it's coming out of left field. Like I'll give you like just a really quick example, and then we'll move on. But in the original Final Fantasy, one of the bosses is a house. Um, it's like a house. It's just like 
just a house. You fight a house. Like <laughs> that's, that it's, terrible. It's, it's it's just weird, you know. It's like it's and, bad. When, and back in nineteen ninety seven, you didn't think anything of it. You're just like, okay, I'm fighting a house. So they incorporate the house in a very funny way in this game where it's a boss battle and. A, it was really hard and aggravating because it turns out the house is just a giant animatronic robot, like mm-hmm. almost like a it, it's like it's like, like a, Chuck a play. E. Cheese bot. Y- yeah, it, like almost like a Chuck E. Cheese bot. It's like a play on like a haunted house, if that makes any sense. But if a haunted mm-hmm. house was animatronic, so like the house can suck you into it, what? it brings you to like another like dimension, or it'll like shoot like fire from it. It's so like. It, it they 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 represent it in a way where it's like it's not as crazy because they are telling you straight up like it is a robot but you know it's just funny that that's an example of like you know they they at least that weird little thing that you would never think that they would need to flesh out they, they decided to flesh that out so yeah. okay then yeah <laughs> sounds crazy weird. yeah josh that's what you I got for us say. man the uh new moon knight trailer came out last week moon knight did you guys watch it Yep, yes. Yep. Yes, I did. Uh, the hype for me is so real right now, man. I can cannot, you taste it? I can taste the hype. <laughs> it looks it, cool. It, I got it is admit pure it. hype. Pure hype. Yeah. What is Moon Knight about? Man, that that is a very like long answer. So I'm yeah. gonna start with going into the trailer and then talk a little bit about the comics because okay. Moon Knight's history is his characters is kind of a mess, but in a good way. Mm-hmm. And then his character history is same thing. It gets pretty mm-hmm. confusing real quick. So in the trailer, uh, Moon Knight is played by Oscar Isaac, and I, based on what we saw in the trailer, it really feels like he is putting his all into this role, bringing his A game. The one detraction I'll, I'll mention is he has this weird British accent as part of <laughs> part of the character, and it sounds very much like the accent that you saw, like Mary Poppins, like this weird British accent. <laughs> but I do think there is a reason for it because. The character of Moon Knight, he suffers from DID, which is Dissociative Identity Disorder. I don't know if you guys are familiar with that. Yep. You, I, am, I am called, not. They used to call it multiple personality disorder, but it's now relisted in the DSM-5 as DID. Yeah. The, the, the DSM-5 is like this big catalog for like therapists and stuff that has different yeah. mental conditions and like yeah. disorders and whatnot. So like it's officially in there. It's a, it's a thing. And it, yeah, it used to be called multiple personality disorder. And I think, I, I think, it, I think the I didn't realize was, it was the same thing. Well, I, it's not. It, well, it, it, the same. I, I think the thing. change is essentially that like they discovered that people who suffer from DID, they legitimately believe that they are the, the individuals that they, that they transition to. So you can't call that like a personality because I, I believe like the personality conveys to some degree that the person's faking it, I guess. Yeah. 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 Be- that is a thing. Like people used to like debate if it was real or not, but right. the idea, like it's legitimately like you have another person inside of you and it's typically a defense mechanism from trauma. Trauma. Yeah. And actually there's a YouTube channel, fantastic channel called cinema therapy. It's a filmmaker mm. and a therapist and they, We'll talk about and discuss movies through that lens. They did a video on DID focused on Gollum from Lord of the Rings. Mm. And really, really cool. I I watched it. It I think it came out last week. So it was perfect timing for the Moon Knight trailer. Mm. So that that Mark Spector has DID. And yeah, it's very rare. It affects less than 1% of the population. And in the case of Moon Knight, there's three main personalities in the show. I don't know if we're going to get these three, but you have Steve Grant who in the comics is a wealthy businessman in the show. It looks like he works at a gift shop in a museum. Mm -hmm. So pretty big change. I'm curious if we'll see him like get his fortune throughout the series or if they're just totally going on a different take with this character. Then the main, the main personality, the core I believe is how it's referred to with DID is Mark Spector and he is a mercenary and he ends up getting killed and then gets revived by this Egyptian god known as Khonshu, who is the god of the moon and is like the patron patron god of the people people who travel at night. So I'm curious if we'll see the mercenary uh, take on Mark Spector in this. I really hope so because it's. A I hope so too. Like this whole the whole concept of Moon Knight sounds uh, very different from a lot of comics, and I find that really interesting. Yeah, and that that's like one of my big draws to it. He's very 
unique. Mm -hmm. A lot of people call him Marvel's Batman, which you can definitely (laughs) make that argument. But because of the DID, there's so much more there. Right. The third personality is Jake Lockley, who's a cab driver. And he's kind of how Mark Spector does his investigation, like groundwork. If, If you guys are familiar with the Batman mythos, Batman has his own little fake, not fake. He has a, like a secret identity that he'll use to like infiltrate mobs and like criminal underground things. Hmm. And it's same, same idea. You know, he, he, he uses this Mark Spector uses this personality to uh, kind of gain information on like what's going on on the street level. Mm-hmm. So curious to see like how much of these personalities we'll see and like what the take is going to be. Yeah. The costume that we saw Look like a mummy, right? Yeah, I thought that was. I thought I, I figured that's what it was. Kind of. Yeah, very. The costume very reveal different. is pretty cool, though. Right. It, the reveal was cool. A lot of people are taking issue with it because it just is very different from the comics. My, I guess my one thing to that is, I'm hoping then we get a lot more of Egyptian culture and mythology influence in the show if they're going to be sh- going with like that mummy, mummy rap look. I really hope it's not just like, oh, mummies are from Egypt. We're going to give him mummy wraps. That sounds like uh, the plot to a Scooby-Doo villain. It, it would just be very <laughs> lazy and I don't know if cultural appropriation is the right word. It, it would just feel very lazy and not authentic to me, which would take yeah. me out of it right away. Right. I feel like I, Marvel. I, to happen. I feel like Marvel, even if that already has happened, uh, they would probably write something in to protect themselves. Yeah, so. in this day and age, with a company of that size, I would hope they're going to be careful of that. Yeah. Because then you also have the the thing of like this. I mean, Oscar Isaac's Guatemalan, so shout out to Guatemalans. Pretty cool. Hey. Um, there's already, you know, issues with a, I, I don't know if he's like, I think he's half Guatemalan. So a half Guatemalan guy who may or may not be Jewish playing a white Jewish hero who's uh, patron god is an Egyptian god, which <laughs> Egypt is in Africa. So, like, there's a lot of problematic things that arise from that already. Yeah. So, yeah. in this day and age, I would hope and think Marvel kind of has a plan of how to deal with that. Maybe, maybe the joke would be that he, one of his identities, thinks he's Jewish, and the other one yeah. thinks he's from Africa. I mean, like, well, I just looked. Yeah, o- Oscar uh, Isaac. Uncle, it looks Uncle like Ruck, he's Uncle Ruckus style, you know? Yeah. <laughs> it looks like Oscar Isaac is half Guatemalan and half Cuban. Oh, oh I didn't know he was Cuban. I knew he was Guatemalan. Or at least, it, it, yeah. Yeah. Uh, uh, apparently, like, he might be part Jewish. It's not been confirmed, though, because I know a lot of people are a little upset that he was cast rather than a Jewish actor being cast. Because there aren't that many. How many Jewish superheroes can you guys name? Um, Zero. Honestly, I can think of him and Ben Grimm from the Fantastic Four. I don't even know who that is. The thing. Oh, Grimm. the thing. Okay, I didn't know. He's that. Jewish? He Jewish. Yeah, he is. Yeah. Oh, see, I didn't even know that. And like, I'm not Jewish, so like, I don't have that uh, a stake in that, and like, don't understand yeah. that experience or that outlook. But my question is, is it is it people of of Israeli descent that are annoyed about that, or is this or is it's this an issue? Man, who knows? That white Twitter is is taking upon the upon the uh the shoulders I don't to, know. to to crusade for there's actually I, it could be that one and just like a quick tangent like if you're one of those people like unless someone's asking you don't do that yeah because because I, I have a feeling that most israeli people could probably care less they're probably more focused on like you know protecting their borders and the, their conflict right. between Palestine. Mm-hmm. So I, I kind of feel like it's one of those things where like I don't think the Israeli people are very frustrated about this. I guess that's more along the lines my point. Yeah. Kate, you want you want to chime in? Yeah. So I was just reading a little bit about this and apparently Oscar Isaac says that on his dad's side he does have some Jewish heritage. Oh. And a lot of people online are saying like you shouldn't have to quantify how much is someone of something to to count as that. That thing. is, yeah. And yeah. so, I I'm from what I'm seeing, yeah. There seems like there's people who are saying he's not enough, and there's the other people who are saying it shouldn't matter how it much. Shouldn't he's matter enough. if he's saying that he is this, then we need to believe him and just accept it. I think I agree with that side of it. Well, I I, I can understand. I mean, can you imagine if they replaced? Um, uh, uh, I can't remember the actor's name. I'm so sorry. Yeah, thank you, Chadwick Boseman. With like, um, 
I don't know, uh, 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 with any other white actor. And then he's like, well, I have, I'm, I'm, I'm from South Africa. So like, you know, I'm African, you know, that, that, I mean, I think it's that kind of sentiment that like people are like, well, why are you casting this as, you know, a, a, a role for the only rare Israeli character and it's the person not even Israeli. However, I will say that again, I mean, it's, it, do the pe- do Israeli people care? That that's my question. Do well, they are they offended? Here, that's that's thing, all though. I want to know. <laughs> like in the comics, he's not from Israel. He is, his dad was a Holocaust. I don't know if he survived the Holocaust or if he mm-hmm. fled from Europe during the yeah. war. Yeah, and so it's like he's not even from Israel. Like he's just like a European Jewish person. Yeah, and so and, like, and that's the other thing too. I mean, yeah. he could. I don't. I mean, I I think you know. It's a very nuanced conversation. Yes. Yeah, but like my big takeaway is like back with like the whole Latinx thing, like none of the Latinos in my circle use that word. My yeah, wife so never many, heard of it. So my wife never heard of that term before. They, yeah. they want to be culturally like sensitive, which I appreciate, but like check to see like what people want and don't speak for them. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. It, um, it reminds, it, it reminds me of, uh, I, you know, people who champion for like the wrong type of things in terms of like social justice. Um, like I can think of like, uh, you know, shortly after a lot of the black lives matter protests, we started had, we started to have this thing where like people in Hollywood were like, Oh, I voice a black, I, I voice a black actor. I can't do this voice anymore. And I thought that was kind of strange. I'm like, well, I mean, this isn't the type of equality black people want. We're not asking people. We're not, we're not asking for people to lose their jobs. Already have it, you know. It's just like that's not that's not the equality people are asking for. So mm-hmm. I can see that. Um, also, going back real quick on Jewish comic book characters, there's surprisingly a lot of big oh, ones. Really? I'm not going to name that- all of them, but okay. here's a few: Hal Jordan, Green Lantern, Batwoman, uh, Harley Quinn. Oh, Sandman, Harley Quinn. Harley Quinn. Uh, oh, Harley Quinn. Okay, okay. Yeah, Harley Wait, Quinn. Which you said, Batgirl or Batwoman? Batwoman. Which okay, the uh, was it uh, Kate Kane? Uh, it doesn't say. It's I'm looking oh, at Wikipedia. Okay. Um, Quicksilver, Scarlet Witch, like it's, it's, the other ones that look a little smaller to me. Magneto. I was that, just surprised. Yeah, that, that one makes sense. Yeah, yeah, sure. Yeah, yeah, that's true. yeah. yeah. Films. But Hal Jordan, I don't, I don't know a. I, I did I guess not I, know that. That one all. surprised me the most. Yeah. Wait, is that the black one? No. Uh, who's the black? Uh, he's my favorite Green Lantern. Oh, that'd be so, funny if he was the Jewish one. That'd John be Stewart? Funny. Yeah. John, John Stewart, Stewart? Yeah. 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 That was always my favorite Green Lantern growing John up, Stewart by the way. Cool. That's that, that's new canon now. John Stewart is is black Israeli. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, what <laughs> started? Quick. Alex, if you're a John Stewart fan, the current Green Lantern does a lot of cool stuff with him. Just I've heard. I've heard. I actually just added it to my like uh, nice. want list because I've I've heard that this is like one of the coolest Green Lantern reads in a while. It, it's a lot of fun. But go, going back to Moon Knight, Ethan Hawke is in this, which yeah, it, it, his character is very interesting. Man, he is going to be playing a character named Arthur Harrow. Rather than people thought him going to be uh, Randall Specter, Mark Specter's brother, mm-hmm. Arthur Harrow was only in one issue of Moon Knight, uh, Fist of Kanchu number two from 1985. Which is, I, is, I don't uh, you own that one? I do, and Ooh. I always thought it was gonna be worthless, but the spec market's hot. Maybe it'll be worth something. It might, it might be, I'm it might be added. Too. Yeah. Now, now I, I did. Didn't one of the actors die? On the yes. show already, uh, Gaspard. I think you pronounce it U- UEL. Um, I, yeah, yeah, he was only 37, which is like so tragic. So sad, that yeah. is sad. That's very sad. He, he was going to play a character, or he plays a character named Anton Mogart, who's also known as the Midnight Man. And he's a, a thief that gets accidentally disfigured after he has an encounter with Moon Knight, and oh. he ends up dying of cancer. But before he dies, he trains his son who his son actually becomes a partner of Moon Knight's at one point. Okay. But then, unfortunately, he becomes a villain as well. He becomes a villain. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, very, very sad. um, Because he died the week the trailer came out. Wow. So, I mean, just very sad. sad. um, Sad news for that. Going back to Ethan Hawke real quick, though. He said his character was inspired by David Koresh from Waco, Texas. I don't know if you guys are familiar with that. Oh, dang, dude. 
that's kind of messed so up. That gives you an idea of, of where they're going with that character. That character is going to be like, yeah. Um, going uh, going off of Ethan Hawke, he is. It's like such a good actor, but it's just funny because I feel like he's like that guy that's just been in everything, but like no one usually knows what he looks like. You know, right. it's just like he's 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 he just does everywhere. Have a forgettable face. He does have a painfully forgettable face, but yet he's in everything. That's he's in a lot. Pretty good. Yeah, I mean he he's in a lot. Um, I I isn't wasn't there like a a website where it would try to like tie you into like movies or, or try to tie any person in like the seven. Wasn't it called like Seven Layers of like Ethan yeah. Hawke or something like that? Well, I can't remember what it was called, but they, like they do that for all sorts of celebrities. Yeah, but essentially, like that was like the thing. There was like a website you type in an actor's name, and it would show you like how many how many like links that it would take you to get to. I think it was Ethan Hawke. I could be I could be forgetting it, but probably. Yeah, <laughs> he's been in a lot of stuff. Needless to say, uh, Kate, what do you have to say? Are you talking about the seven degrees of Kevin Bacon? Thank you, Kevin Bacon. Yeah, that's, See, that's, that's how forgettable Thank you so Kevin much. Face is. <laughs> yeah. I cannot remember the difference between those two actors. I always get them confused. But he's, he's so good. good. That's the crazy thing. He like, is a good actor, though. So, he is a good yeah, actor. So bizarre. Yeah. And yeah. Thank you, Kate. Is people on Twitter were saying how um, the accent by Oscar Isaac was really distracting, as well as Ethan Hawke's wig. I don't think it's a wig. That's what his actual hair. I think that's like. his hair. I'm pretty like sure. Mad. I'm and pretty sure that's I, his hair. I didn't they, notice a wig. They called him from whatever cabin that he was in, yeah. and he was like, "Oh, okay, I'll be, Which, I'll be he, a cult leader." That uh, cult of personality, like the hair matches. Yeah. So we'll yeah. see. I mean, yeah. this is not the first time the MCU has done a cult, right? If I remember correctly. Uh, they, I mean, they kind of did one with Daredevil. With yeah, with Electra. That's, that's what I was thinking of. Yeah, yeah. This one looks like it'll be like straight up like Waco, Texas cult type of almost thing. Almost like almost like Far Cry Five. Like yes, you know, yeah, yes. So well, I'm, well, yeah. Let's see how it goes. I'm I'm willing to check it out. I'm I'm really excited for it. Um, the the trailer came out at the same week of a new issue of the Moon Knight comic series. Cool. Which is currently being done by Jed McKay and Alessandro Capuccio. Okay. So I'd recommend checking that one out or the run by Jeff Lemire. Um, if you're not familiar with the character and you're interested in reading some of the comics, either check out Jeff Lemire's run that he did a few years back or the current one by Jed McKay. I'm pretty sure the and Jeff Lemire run is 2016. I, yeah, that sounds right. Between mm, yeah. 2014, 2016. I think 2016 is correct. And what's cool about this run is right off the bat, Mark Spector is in therapy. So the Avengers have their own therapist that they use just for themselves. And so Mark Spector, some really crazy stuff happened in the past with him. So he's in therapy right now, which is awesome. Therapy is good. Everyone should do it. Go to therapy, kids. I'm going to get off my high horse before I fall off of it. Yeah. (laughs) Anyways, Mark Spector has set up, he calls it the Midnight Mission. It's like, he's like, church more or less his like um ngo nonprofit in the city yeah and his whole purpose is to protect and provide for his neighborhood and so he fights different things in the night kind of like blade like vampires and, and werewolves and all that stuff and you also have this new character called the hunter's moon and another one called zodiac and the hunter's moon is the other fist of conchu because mark specter is called or moon knight is called the fist of conchu Okay. And it's all there's the there's other two, fist. There's two fists. Hunter's Moon, who is a new character. Yeah. And what's cool about that is it kind of just lets you know what kind of pantheon we're dealing with here, where we got like Moon the Judeo, Man. The Judeo Christian tradition, <laughs> you hear about the hand of God. Right. Like Kanchu uses a fist. <laughs> like right. He's going he's gonna knock you out, type of thing. I, I can't I can't wait for the collaboration movie, Moon Men. Moon Men. Moon Moon Men on Earth. Moon yeah. Men on Earth. I'm here for it. Yeah. Which uh, I did mention Blade. I'm also curious if we'll see him in the series at all or any hints to him. I am so happy he, that they got uh, Marshall Holly to do that because yes. I think that's awesome. Did you know he has a kind of a secret cameo in Eternals? Yeah. Oh, I, okay. I do now. I didn't, I didn't want to bring it up last week, but yes, he does. Well, okay. I saw it. If you haven't seen it yet, Alex, you might no, not it's all right. It. I, I, well, you I might just, not notice it. Just that Yeah. Point. Yeah. It's, it's very subtle. Very subtle. So anyway, yeah, yeah I'm wondering if we'll see Blade, both in this comic series at some point and the show. Yeah. Uh, but uh, going back, the one of the really cool things about Moon Knight is he has DID and his mind. It's debatable if 
he already had DID or if it was caused by his mind coming into contact with Kanchu. Mm. And so you, you get to explore that throughout the comics. And something about Moon Knight is he takes a beating constantly. Like it's the amount of punishment his body can take is inhuman. Like Rocky Balboa style. Literally like Rocky Balboa. <laughs> nice. Like knocked down Adrian! Again, and again. And he keeps coming back. And in the most recent issue that came out, it starts off where the first page is four four panels across and it's this bar and people are just chilling, having a good time. And it's this bar where like like C and D list villains hang out, from my understanding. And Moon Knight just walks in, everyone gets real quiet, there's no dialogue, and then he sits down and he's like, Yeah, he's like I know I've known about this place. Like, it's not a secret. I've just have never had a reason to come bother with you people. And he's like, Let me, let's get something straight. He's like, I am not Spider-Man. I'm not the Punisher. He says they represent the extreme ends of the same costume spectrum. He says, I'm Moon Knight. And you all know that means one thing. No one in this bar, including myself, knows precisely what I'm capable of. Ooh. And everyone, like everyone's just sitting there listening to him say this. And that's awesome. He he, he uh, adds, "I beat the Avengers. Imagine what I could do to any one of you." Because he did, <laughs> he, he took on the whole Avengers by himself. Dang. I'd be like, "I'm out. I'm good." Right. Yeah. And so he's like, "I'm gonna." He talks a little bit more. He's like, "I'm gonna leave you with one word: Zodiac." And then he just leaves. And Zodiac is a new villain that he's looking for, and so that's his way of saying, "If you know anything about him, you better tell I mean, me." Yeah. And Dang. so, yeah, v- Moon Knight is not playing around. If you think otherwise, you will catch these hands. Catch those hands. It's on site. It's on, on site. site. Yeah, he, that, he's not playing around. He he will that is protect epic. his neighborhood. Yeah. I like that. So, I'm, I'm excited. I'm, I'm, I'm hyped. Uh, it looks cool. This seems interesting. So, I mean, anything has got to be better than Hawkeye. I mean, am I right, guys? <laughs> I'm not just, even I'm willing just gonna, to I'm watch it. Read the Matt Fraction and David Aha run if you want Hawkeye. Just I don't know. But, oh, I'm, I'm no, talking about real. the show. I'm talking about the yeah, show. I'm, I'm, I'm talking saying, about the show. Don't yeah, watch yeah, the yeah. show. Yeah. Go read that run. Yeah. Well, watch the scenes with Alaco Cox as Echo and then nothing else. Oh, no, no, no. And uh, what's her name? Uh, uh, Yelena. Oh, Yelena. Uh, yeah. yeah. Um, Florence Pugh. Pugh. She, she I'm just going to skip floor. it all. It just looks no, like no, a no. Florence Pugh, waste of time Florence Pugh is the best. I love her. Yeah. She's great. Th- those, those two women, though. I'm all about it. But uh, that's all I got for Moon Knight, guys. I'm excited for it. Yeah, so it sounds I, I awesome. I the comic a 4.8 out of 5. 4.8? Oh, my Dang, gosh. Yeah. Let's just get real specific Rookie, here, Josh. Rookie Didn't scores. Have a lot of Didn't have a lot of action. <laughs> and the, artist, the artist was different. There was a guest Ooh. artist, though. Okay, yeah. okay, okay. All right. I'm still excited. Um, yeah, that's uh, that's cool. Let's, uh, let's see where it goes. I think that's uh, I think that's it for the show, guys, right? We're uh, We're getting on out of here. Let's get. Yeah, I'll, yeah. I'll allow it. Yeah. All right. Now that I have permission from AJ, I can uh, <laughs> I can finally leave my chamber and go outside for the first time in ten hours. Hey, um, say that out loud. Yeah, I wasn't supposed to say that out loud, but since I'm here, if you uh, subscribe or like anything on our socials, AJ might let me out more than twice a week. We'll see. You liking way. our social media literally could save my life. I just want everyone to know that Dude, I'm trapped. You know. Please help. Don't 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 ask for help, please. Okay, yeah. it's, not, it's not very becoming. Please, don't. I don't know. It, <laughs> if you dislike, maybe he'll keep me here longer. We'll see. So it depends. Uh, uh, this could go like either direction. Tell us. Tell yeah. us. Yeah. Don't don't delete or change your comment. Yeah, this you could go any are. direction. But seriously, you can find us on YouTube and literally everything else. So I'm not even going to tell you. Uh, thanks for listening. We will uh, catch everyone soon. Bye. Bandwagon is hosted by Josh Jimenez, Alex Melgosa, and me, AJ Soy. Our show is produced by Kate Smith and edited by yours truly. Our theme song is Lush Waves by Taylor Lewin of Underscore Audio. Thanks for listening. We'll see you soon.